Hello, viewers. Welcome to another episode of the Niger Development Podcast Show. With me on the show today is Miss Judith Mucheta. Miss Mucheta Judith is a young Nigerian lady who holds a master's degree in mass communication. She is the owner of the Judica brand of shoes in Abuja. Today we shall be asking Uchenna several questions on how she started her business and how her advice to Nigerian youth who are currently unemployed or are not enjoying their jobs. Because I understand Uchenna used to do the nine to five um, sort of work and at a point Uchenna decided to start her own business. I learned, as you told me, you left your nine to five job, um, which wasn't that very poorly paying, and um, started off the Judica brand. So it's something strange to see a lady going to shoemaking. So what was the attraction? What drove you to start doing um, something like shoemaking? Oh, first off, my previous job wasn't nine to five most jobs in nigeria most jobs in nigeria are eight to six and mine happened to fall under that eight to six and it was a very tedious job even being the manager i still didn't have time because i had to be there monday through saturday so it wasn't really easy and i can't even say i had all the money i needed to take care of my bills so a time came i met some guy in town who had a shoe production company and we got talking and i thought i could be picking up footwear from him and be selling at that point when i met him i wasn't ready to give up my job because i wasn't sure of what i would gain from the shoe but i just wanted to give it a try so he accepted to give me when i sell i send money and take more and I said out of that way, sometimes I leave work, I go to some offices, drop with people I've already made contact with. Other days, I leave home early, pass through some offices, drop off the shoes, then go to work. I was practically shuttling between reaching out to some customers who I already know and then sustaining myself with the job. But after a while, I realized I was making some money from the shoes i was speaking from this friend and i thought to myself if i could leave my job and give more time to this shoe i think i would do better considering the fact that shortening boat will not give me time with what i want so i thought to give it a try i wasn't sure i wasn't sure of what lays ahead of me but i was ready to take the risk so I gave up my job and then came up with my brand, Judica. And since then, we've been on the journey. How has the journey been so far? Um, has it been encouraging? I know, you know, starting off any business is not easy. I, I, I guess it's been difficult, but enjoyable as well. Uh, it's not been easy, I must say, but I'm, it's what it is. Because I have a vision, I know where I'm going, I know the plans I have, so I just have to keep at it. But I've really had a couple of experiences that ordinarily I would have just backed out and maybe go get another office job and continue. But I want to see to the end of the journey. It's not been easy. I've had a lot of discouragement, ranging from debtors, people picking up footwear without paying. Especially because sometimes I have to reach out to them with these footwear. I don't have an office, so I basically have to reach out to them. And most of them feel they are doing you a favor by picking up your footwear without even paying. So it's a whole lot of frustrations. But then again, there are some who have also encouraged me and give me hope. So I'm very positive that we are making a headway. Yeah, that, that's brilliant to hear because um, like I know personally, I, I did what you, you know, I did it on a low scale, not at the scale you're doing it now. When I was in the university, I used to, you know, go to um, a area market, a place called Bakasi Naba, you know, make shoes, palm slippers and, um, you know, 
go back to Protocol like, where I was doing my industrial attachment and sell to people. I experienced the same thing you you experienced, you know, people were owing, people not minding that I was just a student who was trying to, you know, get by, get some money to help them um, with what my parents were giving me. That people still owed me even to uh, today till date. So uh, I know it's not an easy journey. So for so what has been the, the reception so far for your shoes um how has it been how do you have a lot of customers do you see growth where 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 do you think this business is taking you to yes the business is taking me to the world let me say all to of course i'm already in nigeria we're capturing nigeria it's taking me to africa and maybe eventually to the world because um, I'm gradually building my clientele. And um, mainly, I can say I started off with social media. Are you making a lot of, are you having a lot of clients? And um, where is your clientele? Where, where, where are your customers? Okay. Yes, I know we are making a headway because the market is everywhere. First, I can say the internet because every business is going into digital form now. So the social media platforms, basically Facebook is where we get our customers from. Then friends and family, people I know, and of course referrals from satisfied customers. These are how we've been able to gather some customers and then we are still pushing. Okay, that, that's brilliant uh, because I've personally seen some of your, I've seen your posts on social media, I've seen your interview, you know, your um, excerpts from your WhatsApp chat with people because I know you have clients all over the world. I see people from the UK, I mean, Europe, US, you know, they're buying from you. So uh, in terms of um, the Nigerian youth, like, you know, when I started off, I, I spoke about the Nigerian youth who are currently unemployed and uh, maybe sitting waiting for a job, a government job to come, or who are currently employed and not enjoying their jobs. What, what, what kind of advice do you have for them? I mean, in terms of them starting up something for themselves? The advice I have for the youth who think they want to start up something but don't know how to is to, first of all, believe in themselves because everything starts within our mindset. What, whatever anybody tell you, if you do not believe in yourself, if you don't think you can do it, you're not making any headway. So every average Nigerian you should first of all believe in themselves that they can do it. And they shouldn't give room for procrastination or despair. Don't, don't, don't give room for despair because incidences occurrences will happen that might discourage you but don't give up again there's a need to start from within start with whatever you have at hand don't wait until you have millions before you can start up a business most times it's not actually money that is the problem it's the idea and the willingness to get started i can speak for myself because when i started judica i wasn't looking at a specific amount of money to start up. I just needed to get something started and the willingness was what pushed me. The drive was what pushed me. And when I get started, I don't even know how I raised the money, but it was a gradual process. Well, that, that's brilliant. So, so what you're saying is that people don't need to have one million naira um, or 500,000. So what sort of money? Are you looking at you know if you can advise someone um who wants to go into an event job but not necessarily shoe making or um shoe production what sort of money um are we looking at here i mean there's no money that is too big actually but if you want to start up something first of all you want to know your capability if it is something you can do because it is not everything we want to get involved with that we can do at the end of the day. Personally, I ventured into poultry farm and I failed because I didn't have any knowledge on poultry farm. So I wasted the small money I had buying the beds and getting the feeds. So first of all, we need to be sure that at least we can 
manage whatever venture we are getting into. So money, money, money is not the issue. We should have knowledge of whatever it is we want to get started with. And when you have the knowledge, that's the first thing before you can consider money. There is no fixed amount for any small business anybody wants to start. So I can't say exactly what amount. It all depends on what one can assess. Oh, that, that's brilliant. That, that, that takes me to another question. So since you started this business, you know, because you're an, what they call a, a small, medium, a small, medium enterprise or something, SME. Yes. So um, yeah. have you had any support from the government? Have you accessed any government facility in terms of loans or to, you know, to support your business? Not at all. I haven't had any support from the government. Though recently I attended a training which was facilitated by the Smedan. They told us that after the training, if we meet a certain requirement, we shall be assessing loan from CBN with a very minimal interest. But the truth is the requirements are not something that is easily met. And I think they, they've intentionally made it that way so that not everybody will be able to assess the loan. So for now, I haven't been able to get any support from the government. So given that this business has grown to this level and um, I think you need to, you still want to continue growing. So do you have any plans of um, um, like, you know, extending this, um, your knowledge, of, you know, sharing this knowledge with people by, you know, the way of um, conducting trainings. Because one thing I've noticed with many people that I've spoken to, there was a post I made on Facebook, you know, just some time ago, just to gauge some understanding of how uh, the youth, what they think are the problems, why they haven't reached their potentials. I haven't reached my potentials anyway. Or uh, many people were telling me lack of finance and uh, lack of support. But you find out that this person doesn't even have anything any vision or anything that the person you know plans to do so you do you do you think that you know in order to help our youth you know help solve youth unemployment in nigeria which we think is uh, one of the highest in africa do you think that judica can help them um, you know in training uh, one or two people to you know get started on, in on doing stuff like this sure why not I was trained by someone and then that's why I am where I am today. So I will gladly train people when we are able to expand, get a special workshop and get the necessary equipment that will enable us to train people. Why not? Because people have been asking and indicating interest to learn. And we are really eager to start training because Judica can make all the footwears, remember? Yeah. So we will be glad to carry other people along when we are able to set up a new workshop with the necessary equipment required. So why not? Oh, that's, that, that's brilliant. That's nice to hear. So uh, again, uh, Nigerian youth, you could reach out to this um, wonderful young lady um, and uh, you know, see how you can work with her if you, if you need to start, or if you need advice on how to start, some, start something like that, you could share with her, you know, try, I, I think she's willing to share with you her experience and um, and you can tap in from there. So another question I wanted to ask is, now that this business, you've taken it this far, it's, it's now a brand, um, as I can see on your, on your shirt, Judica brand. And, um, yeah. and, and I know you, you, came up, you came up with some, I know you have some samples there. Can you share this with our viewers so that they can see quickly, you know, share this with our viewers so that they can see oh, your, your samples? Yes, I have some pairs we've made for our customers. Mm -hmm. This is a dark blue male design. Mm -hmm. This is another blue design. Mm -hmm. I have another brown steel male design. That's beautiful. And I just have one, one female design here with me. Very sleek. Okay. You can see. Very sleek. So these are for our customers. We are here to deliver them. Okay. Thank you. So now that you've um, taken this business to this um, direction, what, what, what is it that's now holding you from, you know, achieving your full potential for, for this business? Um, is it financing or what, what was it that's holding you from achieving your full potential for, the, for, for Judica? 
um, before the lockdown, we had plans, and the lockdown has really affected our plan. So, regardless, we are still on on it because I will be needing some money. I'm making plans to raise some money, which will enable me secure a better space at a good spot, and then get some more necessary equipment. A few months ago, we actually got some necessary machines because we're taking it one at a time. We're getting it one at a time. We got some, but we've not fixed them because we will need to get a good location where we we'll have our workshop. Then we can set up our machines and get more with time, depending on availability of resources. So basically, money is what we need now to expand. Okay, that's brilliant. So, I, and I, I hope you've um, uh, have you tried to reach out to uh, some Nigerians or banks or or people that um, that can invest into your business? Um, yes, I've had a few persons contact me having interest to invest in my business, but it wasn't something I wanted to do in a rush. I needed to be sure of what I'm doing before I get people to invest in my business. Maybe talk to a business lawyer. And yes, as for assessing loan from the bank, I am working with the current loan by CBN. Although the requirements are not the ones that could be easily met, but I am very hopeful that either way I will get something. I'm very so, hopeful. So where do you see where do you, where do you see Julika in the next five years? Zika in the next five years will be a household name. Brilliant. Everybody will know Judica, at least within Nigeria and Africa. Even though we already have our customers in America, London, Dubai, but I am targeting Africa. Then from there, we go over to the world. Oh, that, that, that's brilliant to hear. So just um, honestly, it's been wonderful um, you know, speaking to you sharing your dream and some of the th things i've picked up from here because um the aim of this program is to help develop nigeria in our own little way and um, i'm happy you showed the willingness to come on the show thank you so much for that for accepting to come and again for our young people to know that the government sitting down waiting for the government to give you jobs or for the next white collar job is not always the best. You could always look at your environment and uh, think about that thing you can do. So I've picked up a couple of things from, you know, our discussion here. Number one is that as a youth, you must have that drive. You must have that passion. You must have that willingness to take risk because business is a risk. And uh, Judica has told us here that, um, you know, it's not all been rosy. It's been full of ups and downs. But she had that exactly. determination, that grit to, to continue. And you've, you've also told us that, you know, you for you to start something, even if you don't know about it, you need to have some knowledge about what you want to start. And you must, if it, especially if you have the interest that you need to go in there and start learning about that thing and, you know, do something like, about it and you also told me that the best place to start off with is your surroundings look at your surroundings there could be people that could buy from you and most importantly you gave us a warning that it's not going to be an easy journey you know when people um start things that they get frustrated that it's not working the way they want you've told me that perseverance is one of the things that has sustained judica uh, to where it is now and you also told me, which is one of the most, and if you haven't taken anything from this show, take this, that you must satisfy your customers. You must satisfy your customers. And your customers, again, will now market your products for you. So, Judica, um, just to get back to something in, in terms of this, so what do you think um, is the, are the most important things that have helped your business grow? I mean, what has made it that, you know, you are now having more and more customers? What have you done to ensure that your customers, um, you know, that your customer base is, is growing? Um, there are a whole lot of requirements 
to sustain one's business. One of which has kept me going is quality. What people see is what they get. Yeah. You don't have them request for this and then at the end of the day, they get something different. The regular social media, what I ordered for versus what I got, you can't find Judica on that. Okay. Secondly, customer relationship. I try as much as possible to follow up on my customers and be sure they get what we sent across and then the fittings, because most of the time, this is like an online, it's not like they get to fit them and all that. We have to make, based on information they give us, then we send it across to them. So most of the time I follow up to ensure that it fits so them. So customer, customer feedback, customer feedback. Yeah, That's customer a, feedback. I follow yeah. up to get a feedback from my customers and see if there is any way we can improve. Again, there has never been a time I had to refund. Okay. I have had the cases where I had to refund. In other cases, they have to return it for replacement. Okay. I think there was also a pay customer that we, I think we had to split the money. There's always a way out provided I keep my customers happy because I want to, I want to stay in business. So it's a win-win. Yeah. Also, okay. consistency. Okay. Consistency is what has kept me going. Okay. It's not always rosy, but waking up every morning to continue from where I stopped the previous day, it's like a target. So consistency is also important. And then we are prompt, very prompt in delivery. We don't stay beyond the time we give our customer, except anything comes up. And in any case, we reach out to our customer and keep them on to know. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. I think um, we can continue keeping you. Um, you're a very busy woman. Um, thank you so much, um, Judica, for you know accepting to come again, like I've already said. So thank you. I picked up another thing. A customer is the king. You must satisfy your customer. The first rule of customer service is the customer is never wrong. The second rule is read the first rule. So thank you so much, wonderful people, for listening to us. Thank you, Jirika, again for coming around. Exactly. It's been a pleasure happy, having you. And guys, patronize the Jirika brand. Um, you know, she's one of our own, and she'll give you what you want. Thank you so much. Till next time. Bye.